varmints bothering your property, particularly coyotes, Dave and I have the 10 best coyote cartridges you should be loading into your varmint rifle. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. You've tried reasoning with them. You've tried scaring them away. You've tried moving. But let's face it, you've got coyotes. Are you a bad person? Who knows? But you can deal with them if you have the right ammunition. Dave, you're absolutely right. And if you guys need any of the ammunition we're about to discuss, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon to ammo.com. And while you're down there, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. Help the channel grow because we've got a lot of awesome content coming out in 2023 for you. But we're going to kick this one off. We are taking down coyotes today. And I would say probably the classic coyote round is rimfire. There are people out there who say all you need is a 22, And I'm, I'm going to say maybe you need a little bit more than just a 22 for a coyote. But probably the smallest one I'm going to be comfortable with is going to be the 17 HMR. Now, if you, you want a flat shooting, powerful round coming out of a rimfire, the 17 HMR is hard to beat. The 17 HMR, if you want to keep a rimfire, naturally you're going to get cheaper ammo that way, which is always a perk. And it just sends that itty bitty tiny projectile faster than double the speed of sound. And you get these real high quality polymer tipped or GHP bullets. They're, they're great at expansion. They're going to give you that terminal ballistics. Penetration isn't a really a problem on a coyote's thin, thin hide. And it gets the job done. And of course, the VMAX is kind of the gold standard for all varmint and predator hunting. The one thing that bears mentioning with the 17 HMR is that it's very gentle on the hide. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you like tanning, or you like collecting you know your trophies from taking out these coyotes 17 hmr is a great way to preserve a lot of that meat a lot of the furs and uh, it is a great option nice flat shooting and we've got another 17 caliber here that uh, again is going to be on the little bit of the low end but definitely more powerful than the 17 hmr and that is going to be the 17 hornet now this is one of the smallest center file rifle cartridges available today a little bit difficult to find nowadays yeah that's the only thing that would hold me back from recommending the hornet i mean the hornet will do the job it is faster than a 17 HMR. Definitely can get you out beyond 200 yards if you got long range or a lot of property that you need to cover. But if you can't find bullets for it, that is a problem. Now this next one's a bit of an interesting one. Again, another fairly classic round here, and that's the 204 Ruger. These 20 caliber cartridges really are good for fur preservation, and that's what the 204 Ruger really does best. The 204 Ruger, uh, if memory serves, that's the highest muzzle velocity of any rifle round. Something along the lines of like 4,400 feet per second. I mean, that's insane. That is preposterous. That's almost hypersonic. That's Mach 4. I think one of one of people's favorite aspects of the 204's Ruger performance is it's almost negligible recoil. It doesn't feel like you're firing anything at all. That 20 caliber bullet is just nice, soft shooting, gives you no recoil, so you can really focus on that trigger squeeze, make sure your shots go exactly where you want them to. And I alluded to it earlier, and I don't think we can ever get away from it. Of course, everybody's favorite 22 caliber has got to be the 223 Remington, and it's slightly higher pressurized brother, the 556 NATO. Uh, a 223 is going to give you the range, the trajectory that you want in an ammo that's incredibly inexpensive to buy and easy to find. And I think that's really the biggest plus to the 223 is how easy it is to find ammo. You can pick this stuff up everywhere. We've got tons of it here at ammo.com, and if you need it, make sure you click that link down in the description, get your coupon, but you just can't go wrong with the 223 Remington, in my opinion. Another great varmint hunting round, another 22 caliber. This is actually the first center of fire cartridge I ever pulled the trigger on, and that is the 22 250 Remington, or just the 22 250. If you want muzzle velocity out of a 22 caliber bullet, this one was the king of muzzle velocity for some time. Now, it has been surpassed by rounds like the 220 Swift, uh, but, the 22 250 Remington, probably the iconic farm and hunting cartridge right behind the 223. Now, this one stayed very popular. A lot of guys still love it. Not going to have any difficulty finding ammo for this one. I think the real benefit of the 22 250 is that flat trajectory at a price that is not prohibitive. The 22 250 is just a classic varmint round. Now, you can use this for coyotes, prairie dogs, woodchucks, 
whatever is bothering your property, a 22250 can do it. Now, we're gonna kind of step it up here a little bit, and if we're gonna talk about some heavier cartridges now that still aren't too heavy on the recoil, let's talk about the 243 Winchester, which is oftentimes the smallest round that's usable for deer hunting in most states here in, in the United States. The 243 is gonna do a number on a coyote, that's for sure. A lot of guys swear by the 243 win, especially if, if meat preservation is one of their primary goals. Of course, we're talking about coyote, as the listener might be imagining, if, if it could take down a deer, it's probably gonna wax a 40 pound creature easily enough. Dave, it's a great multi-purpose cartridge, and I think that's really where the 243 comes into play. It allows you to hunt both deer and coyotes at the same time, and it comes at a price point that's acceptable. Now let's step it up another notch here, and let's talk about everybody's favorite or least favorite 6.5 cartridge on the market, and that's none other than the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now this has got to be one of the hottest cartridges out there right now. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody loves it. Everybody wants it. There's a rifle and every variability chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, it feels like. And uh, this one will definitely do the job on a coyote, but my question, Dave, is do you think this is too much? Well, I'll tell you what, if you're really trying to go nuts with, with long range shooting, if you want to shoot Kayo in another uh, zip code, then obviously the 6.5 Creedmoor is going to do it. If you want to make a nice rug or jacket, we've kind of officially exited the fur traders 6.5 Creedmoor isn't going to leave enough coyote left for your purposes. Yeah, we're definitely uh, not collecting anything from that animal, I think, now with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, you're going to have that nice flat trajectory that the 6.5 offers, but bullets going to be a lot bigger, going to do a lot more damage. So we're not going to have fur. We're probably not going to have too much meat left. It's basically just pest elimination at this point. If you want to use your AR-15 and you're just sick and tired of 223 for hunting coyotes, I don't know why you would be that way, but if you are and maybe you still want that 6.5 trajectory, the 6.5 Grendel is a fantastic option. Being able to convert that standard AR-15 to shoot the nice, sleek, long 6.5 millimeter bullet is a real advantage if you're taking longer range shots. Becoming increasingly popular, so easier and easier to find. You're going to find a lot of specialized hunting bullets for the 6.5 Grendel, but sheer impact energy and, and the diameter of that bullet is going to do the job even without any kind of terminal ballistics to speak of. Definitely. I, I think the real benefit of the 6.5 Grendel comes from the semi-automatic nature of the AR-15. Uh, having that semi-automatic capability really makes sure that you can get the job done. And the 6.5 Grendel is a great choice if you want to use something yeah. other than 5.56 NATO or 223 Remington. Now, one that can pretty much guarantee could pass through four coyotes in one shot is going to be the 308 Winchester. And I think now that we're in 30 caliber land, uh, we're getting into the realm of being almost overkill in my opinion uh now yeah. some people may say that overkill is underrated but this seems a bit much well like you know like we touched on if you if you just want fewer coyote in the world then by all means use napalm use nuclear bombs <laughs> the 308 win if you got it I, I don't think you're wondering whether or not it's going to pin a coyote down i think the real benefit of the 308 is you can buy it in bulk uh you know you can get lots of rounds that aren't overly expensive and you can really shoot it a lot and the last one we're going to talk about here is is just a classic, uh, one that I'm sure every at least 2A loving household has, and that's a 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, it really is a do all type of a weapon. You know, you can hunt, uh, you know, deer, ducks, and coyotes with it. So uh, I know you're a big 12 gauge fan, Dave. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on using the 12 for a coyote? Well, I'd like to first off say uh, nothing that the 12 will do to a coyote that a, that a 20 gauge or even smaller shotgun can. We're just, That's true. We're just advising shotguns in general for, for shooting coyote. Obviously, you want to keep it to uh, buckshot. Mm -hmm. um, you could use very small buckshot, like number four, number three, number two, number one. Double out, of course, will do it. And uh, any slug will do it, too. In fact, I'm, I'm not even sure a turkey load wouldn't do the job well enough. Yeah, I'm sure they probably would have enough power to take it down. I mean, I love the, the concept that you can use a bit smaller of a, a buckshot, basically, to get a better pattern on that, that coyote. So, yeah, that number four, number two is really going to do a lot of work. As far as, you know, kind of closing everything up here, of course, these are just the ones that we think will definitely get the job done. You shouldn't have any problem with it. In my opinion, my personal favorite, it's got to be my my first love, which is the 22-250. It's the varmint round, in my opinion. It's what it was built for. Uh, it has to be, you know, just a classic flat shooting rifle cartridge. 
with a nice scope, it's hard to beat the 22250 as far as varmints are concerned. Uh, Dave, where are you at on this one? Uh, I use uh, 40 millimeter grenades on Coyote. There we go. We've got the not noob popular. tube, right? Yeah, you know, my neighbors are are not fond of it, but uh, <laughs> you know, they they don't try to stop me. If you just want to start coyote hunting, odds are if you're listening to this podcast, you probably already have an AR chambered for five point five six. Yeah, use use that. You know, you're safe because the coyote is not going to try to retaliate if you if you just wing it or miss it altogether. Um, you're going to get enough accuracy. Uh, if if you have a, a three hundred eight, by all means, but you're not getting a nice hat for your efforts. That's true. I, I think the important thing there is use what you have. Uh, if you have one of these, there's no reason you need to go out and sell it uh, to get something different. It'll do the job as long as you do your part. And to do that, you need to make sure that you get out and practice. Make sure you click that link down in the description. Get some ammo from ammo.com, and we'll see you out on the range.